I'm a visual thinker. I am presenting the awakened African, a design perspective. Every person lives within the content and context of his definitions. The content is the within, which is coming from reincarnations, coming from past lives, and also from the bands of experience that we all have. That is what is within. Then the context is outside, where we all walk on the contemporary African highway. And we take the docks, the dives, all from cultural projectiles, all sorts. Some of those hits are fatal. Some of them we dock, dive, and do what? And continue dust. But whatever experience we have on this contemporary African highway would form lampposts as guards of honor for us and for people who are coming behind us. Because we take our places in the past but live in the present. For the future we seek belongs to the unborn. This is Akataka. Mount Abu. I went to Ibuku once on a research program and I met Principal Ike. And I asked him, he said, Tony, what are you looking for? I, I was with the curator. I said, I'm looking for something. There's a, we have chairs all over Nigeria that they call antiques. And I look at them. What do they have? Floral, Corinthian designs. How do they tie? How do they connect with us, our past and the future? And he said, then what are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for reliefs symbols, motifs that will connect us to where we are coming from, make us enjoy the present and for the future that they will embrace. So he took me into a room and showed me a very delicate design uli symbol that is given to a woman once she's married. It runs from the tip of the pubis to right here between the breasts. Very delicate. And when he showed me that, I looked at him, I shouted, that's an Igbo wedding ring. And he embraced me. <laughs> I said, Igbo wedding? I said, yes. That means in our own culture, in wherever we come from, we have ways of saying she is married. So that's Akataka, Maunabu, the two faces of spirit. Now, on one day, I was there with a friend of mine. And he said, he wasn't feeling too well. I said, what's your problem? He said, Tony, I'm a victim of one of those rare blood diseases. And I looked at him. He couldn't say much. And then, this chair, later I found out he had a sickle cell crisis. Then this chair is sickle cell. It's part of being black. It's part of our lives. But what can we do? Mutations, what do we do? We cross the rainbow bridge. Not only when we ask why, when we come back, we take decisions. University of Benin, they've been able to have two stem cell transplants that changed all that from SS to AS, and then the sickle cell goes, please. Now, this is Nzuko Okanga, the cabal. It exists in every government. It's here in Nigeria. <laughs> it's the coven. If you look at what they are doing in some other parlance, you call it government magic. It is there. We have to do what? We have to awaken. We have to let ourselves no, it's a part of our history. And what do we do? Unless we consciously, unless we have a cognitive resonance towards these things, we will not be able to say we have come to the end of it by 
chasing them away and finding our place in the sun. This is a city shrine. I look at the city shrine. I see many people putting on jeans here and I tell them, slave trade wasn't about oil, wasn't about diamond, wasn't about gold. It was about curtain, sugar. And so many other people from parts of Africa were part of that blood, sweat, and tears that went into that. And into that development, that cutting is what led Levi's Trust, now the jeans. And Okeke wears it to Lagos and feels very cool. <laughs> As a part of every other thing, from Idumota down to Lagos Island here, everything are the same thing. But what are we saying? What we are saying is that some people paid the price for that. Now it's coming back to us in different forms. And what do we do? We fake them, use them. We don't abuse them. We use them. It's a sacrifice. In the city shrine, there's no name. There's no tribe. There's nothing. You just come worship and go. Thank you. From where I come, this is Mao. Mao is the masquerade. The masquerade is a part of the culture. It is the voice of our ancestors. You tell the truth. Beyond that, there's a moral charter which they keep. The secrecy and all that has alluded to them, that is what till today so many masquerades are powerful in our society. And when they come out and say, this is it, and that is it, finish. It does not go to any law court. In some places, in some other places, they will try to do a fusion and then argue, but that is a mound. Oku, the legs. Also, where I come from, what we are doing is that we are trying to let the children know that these stories, these are ways, these are paths to the golden lake of the sun gods, the paradise lost and gained. Where I come from, you can look at the chair. The two legs are differently designed because where I come from in Igbo land, if you are going somewhere early in the morning and your right leg hits upon a stump, it means differently. If your left leg hits upon a stump, they say it's bad luck. And to so many, doesn't it, has it, hasn't it been walking that way? <laughs> so many people believe it and it works for them. So that is Oko. That chair, that chair is a song to an enemy. But it's not that. Why is it a song to an enemy? What you see behind in the figures, those are the ancient Ashanti gold weight design symbols. The ancient Ashanti gold weight design symbols of the sun, it goes like this. The ancient Ashanti gold weight design symbol of the moon, it goes like that. If you go to the na National Mosque in Abuja, on top it, you see it. It is a fact all over Dubai. But what does it mean in Africa? It's a symbol of the sun and a symbol of the moon. And if you sit on it, it simply says, the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night. <laughs> so these are the things. These are parts of us. The Obani Kenga. The Obani Kenga is the power of a man to say in his house, this is the way it's going to be. He may be wrong. He may be right. But it's also that which makes the man take responsibility for what the culture has put or entrusted upon him. So the urban king, guys, that when he's leaving the village and he's coming to town and he has not seen a gas cooker and goes into the, brother, the son in law's kitchen and they light a gas cooker without their matches and the man runs back and says, Nda wam. These people have tried me. 
It does not mean that he left whatever he came to town with. He has just stepped back and they say, no, daddy, sorry, this is gas cooker. He says, okay, you can cook. So that's the urban Ikenga. It's everywhere with you. You go with it, you protect it. You accept the responsibilities that accompany that. But on this part also, to the, or through the contemporary African highway, to where? To the Golden Lake of the Sun Gods. You find out that the awakened African stands on a mound, and on that mound, he sees our paradise lost and gained so many times. Thank you very much. I'm a visual thinker. I am presenting the awakened African, a design perspective. Every person lives within the content and context of his definitions. The content is the within, which is coming from reincarnations, coming from past lives, and also from the bands of experience that we all have. That is what is within. Then the context is outside, where we all walk on the contemporary African highway. And we take the docks, the dives, all from cultural projectiles, all sorts. Some of those hits are fatal. Some of them we dock, dive, and do what? And continue dust. But whatever experience we have on this contemporary African highway would form lampposts as guards of honor for us and for people who are coming behind us. Because we take our places in the past, but live in the present. For the future we seek belongs to the unborn. This is Akataka. Mount Abu. I went to Ibuku once on a research program. And I met Principal Ike. And I asked him, he said, Tony, what are you looking for? I, I was with the curator. I said, I'm looking for something. There's a, we have chairs all over Nigeria that they call antiques. And I look at them. What do they have? Floral, Corinthian designs. How do they tie? How do they connect with us, our past, and the future? And he said, then what are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for reliefs symbols, motifs that will connect us to where we are coming from, make us enjoy the present and for the future that they will embrace. So he took me into a room and showed me a very delicate design uli symbol that is given to a woman once she's married. It runs from the tip of the pubis to right here between the breasts. Very delicate. And when he showed me that, I looked at him, I shouted, that's an Igbo wedding ring. And he embraced me. <laughs> I said, Igbo wedding? I said, yes. That means in our own culture, in wherever we come from, we have ways of saying she is married. So that's Akataka, Maunabu, the two faces of spirit. Now, on one day, I was there with a friend of mine. And he said, he wasn't feeling too well. I said, what's your problem? He said, Tony, I'm a victim of one of those rare blood diseases. And I looked at him. He couldn't say much. And then, this chair, later I found out he had a sickle cell crisis. Then this chair is sickle cell. It's part of being black. It's part of our lives. But what can we do? Mutations, what do we do? We cross the rainbow bridge. 
Not only when we ask why, when we come back, we 